Thanks, Chris. And hello, everyone. Um, as a nano engineer, I've been working in the past 12 years to improve lithium batteries for use in clean energy electric cars of the future. Lithium batteries power most of today's portable electronics like mobile phone, iPads, computers, camera, etc. Electric cars represent by far the most demanding consumer applications for lithium battery. Batteries need to safely provide massive power for long periods of time, must charge fast, and must withstand the vibration during driving. Currently, electric car can't take you very far on a single charge. For example, the Volt, a hybrid electric car released by Holden last year, only has a capacity to travel 87 kilometers on one charge, but charging takes more than 10 hours. The Nissan Leaf, a full electric car, has less than 160 kilometer driving range and takes hours to be recharged. Also, the battery packs used in the current electric cars are heavy. For a medium-sized car, around 1,100 kilograms, a battery pack at least 200 kilograms is needed to achieve 200 kilometer driving range. At the Institute for Superconducting and Electronic Materials, we have been working hard to improve this technology, and we believe nanomaterial engineering is a promising solution to dramatically improve the energy storage the battery life and recharge time of lithium battery. And our team is at the forefront of this research. So to improve lithium battery, first we need to understand how it works. A battery is a, a chemical uh, device which stores electric power. Inside the battery, there's two ends, cathode and anode. Between these two ends, we have electrolyte. When battery works, the electrode charge travel outside of battery between these two ends. In the meanwhile, chemical reaction happened inside. So the type and nature of anode and cathode greatly affect the energy and the power capacity of batteries. So currently, the cathode and uh, anode used in the current lithium ion battery cannot store enough energy. To improve it, we need to find new materials with higher capacity. For the anode side, uh, after screening all the candidate materials, we found the silicon is quite promising because silicon has theoretical capacity 10 times higher than current anode. But silicon is a semiconductor. The conductivity is not high. Also, silicon suffer from volume, big volume change when lithium moving in and out of the structure. This sort of volume change causes particle crack. Therefore, the capacity of the battery uh, decreases rapidly from repeated charging discharging cycles. In the past few years, we have been working on silicon anode, and we come up with a solution. We designed and fabricated um, silicon carbon cold shell structure by using this sort of Cultural structure, we can significantly improve the cycling performance of silicon anode, but the fast charging capability is still very limited. Recently, we found germanium is a more promising anode material than silicon in terms of fast charging capability because lithium diffusivity in germanium is 400 times higher than in silicon. So, but germanium, similar to silicon, it suffers from big volume change uh, when lithium moving and out of the structure, so cause crack and capacity fading. To solve this problem, we designed and fabricated a, a germanium carbon co-shell hollow structure. The particle size of this sort of uh, co-shell structure is around 30 nanometer. To put it in perspective, 30,000 of this sort of particle laid end to end, the length still less than one millimeter. So it's a very fine particle. So the surface energy of this particle is very high. Therefore, the particles automatically agglomerate with each other. So the uh, carbon shield connected with each other forms three-dimensional conductive network 
which is very good for charge transfer and lithium diffusion. So in this way, the new battery can uh, achieve um, charge capacity five times higher than current anode material. And also, it can tolerate fast charging. The charging can be, uh, the charging uh, just takes less than two minutes for this battery. So for the cathode side, we're particularly interested in sulfur because sulfur has theoretical capacity 10 times higher than current cathode material. So from, also sulfur is very cheap. It's cheap material and also non-toxic, which make it very suitable for large applications, like in electric cars. So from this figure, you can see, if we use lithium sulfur battery as power for electric cars, it's possible to achieve 400 kilometer driving range. Um, however, the previous generation lithium sulfur battery hasn't been commercialized because uh, the capacity fade rapidly uh, from repeated charging discharging. In previous sulfur uh, electrode design, sulfur was coated on relative open carbon structure. This is a problem because the intermediate reaction products called lithium sulfur can easily dissolve in the electrolyte. This causes the uh, battery capacity drop very quickly during charging discharging. So the breakthrough we have made actually is to confine sulfur in this sort of a double shell carbon hollow sphere. So this sort of a carbon, uh, double shell car hollow carbon sphere work as nano container for sulfur and prevent intermediate reaction products uh, leaking out. In this way, we can significantly improve the cycling performance. Independent uh, experimental results show the battery can be charged, discharged for 100 cycles without obvious capacity drop. Uh, however, currently, the, uh, only 65% possible amount of sulfur can be used because this, you can see there's a large hollow void. So the sulfur stick to the carbon surface. The inside ho hollow void, only small amount of sulfur there. Therefore, the amount of sulfur is low currently. To increase the amount of sulfur and uh, try to achieve higher capacity, we are currently using uh, vertical aligned carbon nanotube as container for sulfur. And after insert sulfur in, we then cover, seal the, surf, the top and open top using a porous carbon or porous conducting materials. So the diameter of this carbon nanotube is also very small, just a few nanometers. So basically, we're working on both anode and cathode. We try to find very good cathode and anode material, then put the most promising one together and most suitable one together to achieve lithium batteries with excellent performance, which is suitable for electric car application. So electric cars has the potential to significantly reduce city pollution as there is no exhaust gas at all. Also, uh, this can significantly increase public healthy and uh, contribute to a more sustainable environment. Uh, replacing current cars with electric cars can also reduce our dependence on oil and petrol. The US government has pledged $2.4 billion dollar in federal grants for electric cars and batteries. Chinese government has announced recently they will provide 15 billion US dollar to initiate an electric car industry. Australian government has also investigated uh, 26 million dollar to the automotive collaborative research center called AutoCRC uh, to develop technology for more affordable, more reliable cars. Uh, together with industry funding and researchers' contribution, um, the total CRC program comprises $72 million cash and in-kind contribution from 30 participants and in four countries. Uh, our research team at Institute for Superconducting and Electronic Materials at University of Wollongong leading the auto CRC vehicle electrification program. As part of CRC, we are currently closely, closely working with uh, our industry partners, including battery manufacturers, battery charging company, and automobile company, trying to scale up and commercialize our lithium battery technology. Thanks. <laughs>